welcome back to a new video by yours truly, Marmalade. Today I'm going to be making a little bit of a recap kind of video from when we made the marching Melody costumes for my idol group Melody Parade. I'm sure you're very familiar with these costumes, we have worn them a lot. We did actually make them back in 2021 and I filmed a whole lot of the like costume making process for that. Even though it was quite uh, rushed because we were making them for an event at the time, I did film quite a lot of videos from that and I thought it would be really great to be able to make them into a YouTube video. That was the original plan all along but I've kind of got a bit of a backlog, backlog now of videos that I filmed and just never edited but I thought as a way to like make it more interesting and also do something with you is I asked you over on Instagram if you have any questions about idol related activities and also if you'd like to stick to the end for a little announcement I will be revealing something new related to Melody Braid and costumes so if that's something that interests you. I did get asked quite a lot of questions over on Instagram um, lots about costumes, lots about the group as a whole and idol groups and I think there's a few questions that I might actually have to make as separate videos just because I think they would end up being really quite long to answer more than this video probably definitely okay so making these costumes I think we did a Taobao order and it was like a thousand dollar Taobao order which is like insane but it was really just like a whole bunch of satin it was like a nice shimmery overlay there was like some cute ribbon uh, material that was like a bit iridescent there were some golden buttons buttons are surprisingly expensive on Taobao I don't know why but I think it's just because they're they're really nice but they're quite expensive uh, which is annoying because buttons are so cute but expensive uh, what else did we get? We got petticoats, we got shoes, we got horsehair braid for the skirts, we got nice uh, gold iron-on decals as well. Um, there's also like a glitter cybery kind of fabric that we used for like the bows. Um, and of course the pom-poms. The pom-poms I love. These were only like two dollars each or something insane, like really cheap compared to like what you can get them for here uh, in Australia. I'm pretty sure they're like 15 per pom-pom. So let's kind of get into some of these questions. Like Code Meow asked, what's your costume design process? So a lot of the time I uh, will either have like an event that's upcoming or like a style or mood or idea vibe that I'm trying to meet. So uh, usually if there's like a new event or performance opportunity for Melody Braid, I'll go, hmm, I wonder if there's like an opportunity for us to have a new costume set. And based off that, I will try and then design a costume that fits that need. So uh, like for an example, the Shine costume set that we made, I was kind of going for like our Shine dance, obviously, PV, and also just like Christmas. So it worked really well. It, it's really easy when you give yourself like a genre to stick in or a uh, certain style, I guess that's not even a style I guess it's, it's like the theme of the costumes and it helps you design around it give it a purpose I guess to fill that really helps me so what I go uh, then do is use my iPad I use procreate I use my Apple pen and then I go and sketch out a bunch of ideas uh, so once I have that design I usually like a rough sketch of each member I like to do different members because like sometimes I'll add a different different style for each member like sometimes pip my own pants that's fine we'll, we'll like, change it we'll do, do that instead once I have like a rough design with like all the colors and like just like drawn I can kind of put an example here for what I did for the marching melody ones as you can see here and these were inspired by like circus they're a little bit campy I was definitely looking at a lot of carry pummy pummy stuff when I designed them and so once you have these designs I usually send them to the group chat and get everyone's opinion and see if they're on board um, or present it to them in person it really just depends like when I'm gonna see them next and from there I usually get a good idea of whether or not they ever online them or not usually they do like them so just be prepared that someone might have if you're a designer pitching to other people someone might have some feedback be, for you so that's the stage where you need to be ready to kind of change your designs a little bit around and be a bit flexible with your options so to suit um, and so once we've done that I like to go into Taobao or I like to go online and, and then look, either look I have a master sheet spreadsheet of like all the links that I've ever bought before so I know that they're like reliable and I know in my head okay I bought that satin before I've saved it I can go back and find that link um, which is also available on my patreon uh, for all my patrons if you'd like to join and you get access to that mass master excel spreadsheet file but what I like to do is then make like a bit of a mood board in terms of fabrics uh, which I think is something that normal designers do honestly where they get like sample swatches and like physically make it and like cut bits of fabric out but I just do that digitally I get photoshoot photoshoot photoshop up on my pc and then I copy paste um the original image in and then start building them around the side I don't know if I did it for marching melody honestly but I can show you an example for some of my other idol outfits and also cosplay I do this with my cosplay as well it's a really helpful way to kind of get a, a gist of all the textures and see if they go together and also so that they kind of fit the style so if you're you're going to want to like 
plan that in this stage. And from then you can like start building again an Excel spreadsheet. I like to put in, again, this is one of those questions that I probably should have made a separate video. I'm so sorry, but I want to go into as much detail as I can. Um, so I go into a spreadsheet and then do up a budget, see kind of how much it's gonna cost. Again, present that back to the group and see if we can afford it or not. And then we go for it, we order everything. If you get stumped, for looking for designs, I Pinterest is my best friend and I also have a few old magazines magazines like art books that I use sometimes it's a really good idea to look at simple fundamental basics and then build on top of that so like kind of getting your core silhouette first like will it be a dress will it be a two-piece will it have sleeves will it have detached sleeves is it gonna have pants who knows like those kind of things and then going into those items and designing those one piece at a time I find helps not get so overwhelming with like needing to make the whole thing um and that way I think a lot of times like you can add as much detail as you want as long as you can make it of course but. so Sailor Mars asks how do you organize things so everyone is involved but the costumes stay uniform so this is something that I've been doing since my love life group back in the day Aquaria where we would have um, sewing days together so I know it's not possible if you're working with people who are from like interstate and across uh, across the world or whatever but you can kind of implement some of the same strategies and that is again everyone uses the same fabrics and materials down to like zippers buttons everything everyone uses the same thing and this is done because I get everything online so it is easy to kind of order it all either bulk together and then ship those to the individual people or everybody comes over and we do like a sweatshop like sewing day at mine which is like a nice bonding activity as well and you actually end up skill sharing as well so uh, I might not know how to do something but I can ask Beth I can ask Pip she might know things um, T always helps where she can with all sorts of different things you can see her working on bows on the marching melody costumes so uh, everyone's got skills that they can bring to the table and it ends up like getting the job a whole lot faster I think a lot of people also sort of asked uh, in the questions is how can I do it so how do I sew so fast and a lot of the time it's because we work as a team and we'll split off the different tasks to different people throughout the day of sewing so while someone is cutting out the pattern someone else is overlooking all the sides somebody else is making a start on the accessories kind of like that like batching like like really just sharing all the skills in between the team. Making sure that the costumes stay uniform is using the same pattern, uh, which goes so far, honestly, it goes so far, because uh, if you don't use the same pattern, maybe someone will make theirs a tiny bit shorter or longer, which is usually fine like to adjust, to make adjustments to accommodate your own body and your own fit, but I more mean like things can end up looking completely different uh, if you're not sticking to at least a similar base pattern, I think. Um, like you use the same one, modify it to fit yourself, but of course I think using the same patterns has absolutely helped, like things like a bow. That's what I mean. Like if you're going to make a collar bow, uh, someone might make it like tiny and wider, whereas someone might make it droopier or like, you know, like really big. Uh, someone might not use like interfacing or someone might use like really strong interfacing. It always turns out different. There's like no wrong or right way to do things, but it's nice to kind of agree as a group if you'd like it all to look very cohesive to try and use the same strategies and you will end up having the same similar looking costumes. It's something that I've been doing for quite a few years now across several different groups but of course creative freedom don't like don't let yourself get so stuck on it needing to be perfect that it ruins the experience for everyone involved a lot of people are asking about fabric and what fabric is best to use for an idol costume and honestly i feel like that's kind of a subjective question because obviously best just depends on the style of costume that you're going for same with cosplay where i i feel like the most important thing with fabric and idols is using something that is durable and that means it can be worn multiple times for multiple performances because I recently discovered this on the me and I melody costumes where I used a fabric um, for the shorts that of course the risk is when you buy things online you can't always feel the weave and like the thickness and the texture of that fabric you just kind of have to trust off photos that'll be good and unfortunately it turned out that that fabric is quite actually weak and thin and I'm very worried about it ripping now it doesn't like tear apart while you're dancing like that makes sense, right? So I'd say that's the most important thing. Secondly, second as important, I would say, is then picking fabrics that look nice on stage. Um, and I mean that because I've seen idols make fantastic 
uh, costumes or for but when you get onto stage sometimes they kind of uh, f fade into the background and that is especially true when you, you're using a black fabric as well um, so I would try and avoid base fabrics like poplin or cottons things that are like quite matte uh, because they end up kind of like disappearing into the back of the curtains sometimes if there's not like a bright white background um, so I like to keep that in mind when okay we're going to a stage what kind of like fabric we're gonna use to kind of stand out more like of course sequins and sparkly costumes costumes do amazingly and they're really eye-catching and like if you can uh, embellish with rhinestones or beads and things that like catch the light I think it's a lot more effective um, but it really depends on what you're going for of course like different styles have different fabrics so if you're doing something more punk rock even I would still recommend using like pleather they're still quite shiny or like metal embellishments are often quite like nice to see on stage but that's something to keep in mind when you are selecting your fabric uh, I feel like I can go into way more detail with these but so Mia Tashi asks, do the other Melipara gals help you sew the outfits or do try-ons? And yes, so like I said before, we do a lot of sewing days together where everybody helps doing what they can with different skills that they have. Um, everyone's pretty much open to learning new skills as well, but usually um, it helps to be able to like put people on their strong suits. Like uh, Pip, for example, sewed all of the like bodices for Marching Melody. And yes, of course, that means that everybody can try it on and like while they're there, it's really helpful. It's like, it's a lot more efficient than like having to wait to do a fitting and stuff but um, for some other costumes like I'll work on them and then I'll bring them to dance practice for people to try on I'll take some measurements or I'll write down some notes and then I go fix it later when I have time in the week Stefari underscore flying asks where did you get the ruffles on the skirt they're so beautiful and iridescent they are so all of the fabric from these costumes all came from Taobao and I can list um, I have the list of all the material links uh, on my patreon Avatar Freya asked, uh, outfit theme you'd love to see Mer Meryl, Meryl Para do. So something that I've been pining on for quite a while is a princess themed set because I feel like these marching melody ones to me as I was making them was kind of like, this is like reminding me of like Barbie, kind of like the Barbie princess movies that I grew up with. And so I think I would really love to design like a really embellished princess set where we have like gloves and like tiaras and like all sorts of streamers. Yeah, but I would love to be able to make fluffy beautiful princess outfits. I'm not sure how danceable they would be obviously but it is uh, on my list. Stevie Masha 21 asked what is your favorite J-pop group and by far I have to say uh, absolute favorite is Wasta. Uh, I've loved them for so many years. I literally love their music. I listen to it every day. They're like whole discography is on my Spotify saved list so and you can probably see this in a lot of my costumes that inspiration have come from Wasta since like 20 2019 like Christy Kuma asked how do you stay motivated now this is a hard one and I think I could make a separate video as well but I will give you a short brief thing uh, for especially motivated to make idol content is definitely to um, all the years of Love Live that I uh, participated in consuming a lot of the Love Live idol concerts, uh, like the real life ones. So watching Aquas perform uh, literally filled me with like years worth of motivation. I would say uh, seeing those girls perform on stage, it's just like fills you with such a fantastic feeling. But of course it can be hard and you can lose motivation because idol work is really, it's a lot of effort and usually you don't really get a lot of like things back from it. You really have to be self-motivated to do idol work. And and I find a lot of motivation in just admiring my fellow members. So if I look at Melody Parade and I think, oh my gosh, I really want T to do really well, so I'm gonna do really well. Like, I really want T to look really cute today, so I'm gonna make her a really cute outfit. That, like, always fills up my cup. It's like, no matter what, that's kind of like a fail safe. It's like, I wanna, as well, if, if, if they're not feeling well, I'm like, you know what? I know what I can do to cheer them up. I'm gonna go, like, make them a costume. I've also recently been getting a whole lot of motivation from VTubers. I know this kind of might be a stretch, but some of the stuff they do is kind of like in line with idol activity and seeing them do like all these cool song covers and like music videos on YouTube is actually really, really inspiring and motivating to see. But um, another thing that I do to find my own motivation is to look at my past work and see how I can kind of improve myself. Something that I really wanted to like develop as a craftsman and seamstress is constantly kind of improving the way that I sew, whether that's making them uh, costumes that last longer, that are more sustainable, that are built from better materials, that are kind of more detailed, however I can figure that out, and kind of like uh, explore different themes of my designs. So how can I make things that are like really, uh, I guess, a true artistic expression of my own self and my own branding and what I want melody 
ability prayed to be. I think there's something that I find motivation there in as an artist, artist, a designer, I guess. I, I always am motivated to one up myself and it gives me motivation when I look at some of my old sewing projects and that are like barely, barely still holding together, you know, like the seams. Little things like buying myself tools to be able to improve also helps with that. So when I bought my overlock, I was like, yes, this feels so good. Now it's gonna be like even better quality. I recently bought some uh, table legs for my table to make it a bit higher, which means that I now have like a nice workspace that I can easily cut patterns on. Things like that, like giving myself the tools to be able to create easier gives me a lot of motivation. And, and leaving things on my to-do list or having like a mood board obviously helps because I can kind of visualize and remind myself that there are still things that I am working towards. Like I really want to cry cut one day um, so I can do like iron on vinyls or like a embroidery machine or a 3D printer that I can use to then make my costumes even more detailed. Let's get back to costumes for a second. So X Moonlight Cos X asked, what's been your favorite Melody Parade outfit to make so far? I would say my favorite one to make so far were the Shine Christmas dresses, just because I really liked how different they were compared to all our other costumes. Um, I liked being able to do like the red, the velvet, the stripes, the ruffles, because they were kind of like maid themed outfits as well. I really loved um, putting them all together and I actually uh, didn't have to buy anything new for that. So I did buy it, build everything for that costume from my stash which I'm sure if you understand is a very satisfying feeling being able to finally finally use fabrics from your stash for a costume and I really really like how they turned out I'm hoping that we can bring them out again sometime for a performance soon we'll just have to see okay I think that's all the time I have today to answer your questions I'm really really sorry if I missed yours but I can definitely do another video like this especially about idol culture in general and starting your own group maybe yeah, like a little to-do list so I'd be happy to share what I know with you but thank you so much for watching this video and because you stuck to the end I will actually reveal that uh, Melody Parade is in the process of redesigning our marching Melody costumes so I'm really really excited um, as you can see I'll put an image here of the current sketch that I'm working on but they are definitely inspired by like magical girls of the 90s and especially Cardcaptor Sakura and um, I'm really really excited to start making these I'm pretty sure they will be for Smash but I'm not sure yet. I can't guarantee anything. But thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed kind of the process of me, of us, as we made the Marching Melody costumes in 2021. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.